Hello, and welcome to another episode of Reading Reddit with Amber. And smacking people in the face with gloves. I'm a scarecrow. <laughs> and I'm a Mickey Mouse! <laughs> or, or not a, or a mouse that is uh, not owned by Disney. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, a uh, intellectually distinct version of a mouse that has very similar voices to other popular mice. All right, then. Uh, I'm Amber, this is Brian, and we're going to read some Reddit to you. I'm still very confused about who I am. Last week you said that I did... I, I still am trying to figure out who I am. You're Brian. That's all you need to know. I'm Brian? <laughs> like Brian Shrimp. No. No? It seems like You're a... You're Brian re- Toner. I'm Brian Toner? That doesn't sound right. That sounds right to me. <laughs> And this is your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like her scarecrow look? She's very proud of it. Well, I don't have the full thing on right no, now. No. It looks much better with the full makeup and everything. I yeah. just have a little orange on my cheeks and stuff. But I do like my scarecrow look. I think it's a cute look. Yeah, I think so too. Our first story today is... Am I the jerk for encouraging my boyfriend with autism to try new things? Josh and I have been dating for just over a year. I won't lie and say things have been easy as we've had miscommunications and all sorts, but we're in a good place now where we really understand each other. When we started dating, Josh mentioned different things he wished he could try or do, but felt he couldn't because of his autism and OCD. He asked if I would help him maybe try some small things so we have. He's always had issues with the texture of food, celery being one of them, but I have managed to come up with a soup recipe where he actually likes the celery in it. Just small things like that. The problem is, a week ago, I made a comment that his socks had seen better days, and he agreed, but said the shop where he's always bought them no longer makes the ones that feel right on. I asked him what it was about those socks that feel right, and he said they had padded soles and felt tight around his toes with no loose bits or threads. I asked him if I was to buy him some socks, if he would try them to see if they were close enough. He said he was doubtful I'd find anything, but agreed to try any that I bought. I found some with padded soles and bought the size smaller than he normally wears. He said they weren't perfect on, but close enough that he would wear them and was glad to no longer have holes in his socks. Today we had a socially distanced barbecue at his parents' house, and he proudly showed his mom his new socks. She asked since when can he wear different socks, and he explained. She lost it at me. She said, I can't accept her son has autism and I'm trying to change him. She said, the biggest thing that I've done that's annoyed her is encouraged him to take driving lessons when people with autism shouldn't be behind a wheel. She ranted about all the other things I've encouraged him to try. I was lost for words because Josh is really proud of the things he's managed to do. It's his first relationship and he never thought he'd meet someone so his mom started ranting that he slept with the first girl that laid eyes on him, and he's not capable of knowing what true love is like. You say it, Mom. No. Speak the truth. Truth. No. (laughs) I've always tried to be extremely respectful of Josh's boundaries, but now I'm wondering if I was a jerk for helping him try new things. His mom said I'm no longer welcome at their house, and she hopes his obsession with me is over soon. Edit. Thank you so much for all the kind comments. I'm trying my best to read through them all, and sorry if I don't reply. Josh's mom hasn't spoken to him since yesterday and is giving him the silent treatment, which is making him extremely anxious and upset, as he can't work out what he's done wrong. I'm trying to tell him that he's done nothing wrong, and I've explained what some of you have said about it being a mom problem. He says he's always felt crowded by her growing up and wishes she wouldn't treat him like he's still a child who can't cope with the world. I'm not really sure how we'll go forward with his mom, but I know he can't cope with her giving him the silent treatment much longer as he's determined he's broken some sort of social rule by wearing new socks. Well, that'll help him, you know, overcome his fears and anxiety and OCD. Uh, Yeah. Well, you know, especially since his old socks were, you know, falling apart and, uh, you know, he couldn't buy some of the old ones. So, you know, this makes perfect sense in every single way. Like... OP is so much not the jerk here, and the mom is so much the jerk here. Like, Well, she's just trying to protect him against the dangerous world, Amber, of socks. Yes, so dangerous. You know, if you buy the wrong pair of socks, 
they'll eat your feet. And you don't want to see that. Like, I have seen it firsthand. Have you now? It's not pretty. Like, have you ever seen a sock eat someone's foot? No, I personally have not. Yeah, it's pretty terrifying. I wouldn't recommend it. It only happens with autistic people, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, is that how we test if I'm autistic or not? We just buy some socks, and if they eat my feet, that, then that would uh, mean I'm autistic? Well, no, it's the wrong socks. If you, yeah. you wear the right socks. Yeah. So, we have to find the wrong socks. How yeah. would you know if they're the wrong socks? They well, just they'll eat, eat your feet. feet. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right. Autism is a spectrum. And uh, so... I had a thought I was going with, and I just forgotten it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, I think it's something like this. Autism is a spectrum, just like the rainbow. And the rainbow is part of the gay agenda. <laughs> and so all autism people are pushing the gay agenda on us. Okay, that's where we're going now. Uh, great. I mean, I feel like I've heard that, actually heard that conspiracy theory Oh, no, before. are you serious? I feel like I have. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. I know I'm you are. I'm just making up the craziest I things know. I can come up with, and apparently people believe these things are true. Uh, so, I think the important thing here, so um, autism is a spectrum, and autistic people have a wide variety of traits um so and some people do have um a di difficulty living independently but other people don't mm -hmm. and it's really important not to assume that someone is going to be a certain way because they're autistic and op's mom here is or not op's mom the uh, josh josh's mom here is creating a real what She's being one of those autism parents, and I don't use that term to mean any parent who raises an autistic child, but specifically those parents who act like my child is autistic so they can never do anything and they're just going to live in my basement for their whole life. Like, that seems to be how, kind of how she's going. Like, the autism is what defines her son to her, and uh, she can't, like, I mean, what's this thing about autistic people can't drive? All kinds of autistic people drive. All the time. Some autistic people Apparently can't drive. Apparently drive her crazy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> lots of autistic people can and do drive. And so... Well, that's why the world roads are so dangerous. No, that's not why the <laughs> roads are so dangerous. And, and so... Um, like, this whole thing... And, like, then about the socks. Like, they literally stopped making the kind of socks he was wearing. Like, was she just expecting him to wear them down to, like, threads? Apparently. Like. He was never going to find another pair of socks ever again. So, she, you mean, he just has to wear the those ones forever. Like, those are that. that that's it. Like, never again can you buy another pair of socks, Josh. Like. <laughs> These I, are it. <laughs> I want to point out what OP really did right here is. So. They're in a conundrum because she ha he had these socks that worked for him, and then they don't make these socks anymore. And it doesn't make sense to wear those same socks for the rest of time. So she took into account the things specifically that he needs in his socks. He needs them to have the padded soles, and he wants them to be tight around his feet with no loose threads. A lot of autistic people do have sensory processing issues, and so she tried to find something that would meet his sensory needs, and she succeeded. Um, and so I think that's the really important thing is like she wasn't pushing him to do new things. It sounds like every time he's d tried new things, it's one out of necessity. Like you don't make these socks anymore. And like um, I definitely get how hard it can be when there's something you really like and they stop making that specific product. I have gone on many a rant with to Brian when they stop making it discontinue a product that I love. Um, and it is really frustrating and hard to find a replacement sometimes. So, um, but OP did the right thing in like specifically finding out what it is about that product he liked and finding a, the best way to replicate that experience. And it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's very close. Yeah. And well, where OP kind of went wrong in this situation is that they didn't actually invent a time machine and go back in time <laughs> and, and buy, buy the, the socks. socks, you know, for Josh. And like, you know, that's really what needed to be done in this situation just to make sure that Josh was comfortable forever and, you know, so that he didn't have to worry about actually going outside of his comfort zone. And, you know, that's really, you know, I can't stress it enough how many people just don't put enough effort into building time machines because, you know, so many problems like this would be solved if people would just do that. 
So, um, and going back to the kind of the beginning of the first story, um, anytime Opie and Josh have made a change, it's either out of necessity or it's because it's something Josh wants to try. Um, so it's important to note that there's nothing wrong with being autistic and autistic people have their own traits that are often different from neurotypical people. So it may seem, if you're neurotypical, it, it may seem like someone's being very particular or picky or stuff like that. But a lot of people, like I've mentioned, have sensory processing issues. They kind of like make it much harder to, so like things that would seem like just kind of a little off to you, like for someone who's autistic may like actually be painful. Um, so not to get into a whole long thread, but like it's important to accept that if you have a fan, family member, someone in your life who's autistic, it's not necessarily, you're not going to be able to like stop them from, you know, having these traits or something like that. So like the celery thing, uh, if you read down the comments, uh, basically OP has like some way of cooking it. So like it loses its texture. And so it's a sensory issue for him. He still wouldn't like the celery if he could feel the celery texture, but because she's able to remove the set texture, he can eat the celery. Um, so I want to make it clear that it's not good to try and change someone because they're autistic, but if someone wants to try and like, maybe he likes the taste of celery, but the texture is just so off-putting to him that he can't enjoy it. Um, I think that was a great that she's been able to like kind of help him. Uh, find ways to make it meet his sensory needs. Um, so don't try to change people who are autistic. Um, but also, like, if someone, like, needs help with something because, one, they really like this thing and it's just not working, or two, the other thing doesn't work anymore, like, just listen to them and uh, take their needs seriously. So, um and just a little bit of a note, I, uh, <laughs> on my, my joke about being maybe or maybe not being autistic, I'm kind of in this gray area where I have officially been diagnosed with what's called, uh, what is the social pragmatic communication disorder? It's basically all the social issues of autism, but without the repetitive and restrictive behaviors. Um, but it's basically a diagnosis. You never hear of it because nobody uses it, I guess, like, so, um, there's kind of this area where, like, I think they may have just asked me the wrong questions because I don't have some of the more obvious repetitive and restrictive behaviors, but I do still feel like I have repetitive and restrictive behaviors. So, I'm not trying to make fun of people being autistic. I literally do not know for sure if I'm autistic or not. So, that's what the whole thing was about. So, not making fun of anyone. It's an actual legit question. I don't even remember where you had said something that might with have the been... the socks eating my feed. Oh. <laughs> to find out if I'm autistic. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I see now. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it was it was just just being clear. I, I It's a legitimate question that we, we do not have an answer to. Yeah. And I would like to clarify one thing also. Like, when Amber says you shouldn't try to change autistic people... Really, what she means is you shouldn't only try to change autistic people. You should try to change everyone to mold them into like your perfect no, person. No, and no, no. So, it's yeah. very much not. The so way. I think no. that's really what would solve many problems. All right, our next letter is titled "Am I a jerk for asking my girlfriend to stop riding horses?" No, this is reasonable. No, no, it's not reasonable. I'm a 24-year-old male, and I've been with my girlfriend, a 24-year-old female, for two years. She started saving up to ride horses after university, but didn't tell me this until after she started riding for six months. So now, she doesn't sleep in past 7 a.m. She comes home smelling like horses, and she's gone for hours on the weekend. Yeah, this guy has legit grievances. No. To be fair, she struggled with alcoholism and had several relapses, but now she's saying she won't drink again because then she couldn't ride. This is the longest she's ever been sober. It's amazing, but I feel like she's giving more credit to the horses than is fair. I told her it's embarrassing to tell people that my girlfriend is into horses, and it costs like $700 a month. Our finances aren't combined, by the way, and she makes $90,000 a year in an expensive city. She asked me what's embarrassing, and I told her that horse girls are annoying, weird, and privileged. She got teary-eyed and said I was being judgmental because 
some horse girl stigma. And I care about her and I think riding horses alienates people because horse girls are the worst. Yeah, half horse, half girls. <laughs> You know, they haven't been, even been around since ancient Greece. That tells you how unpopular they are. Uh, OP really has some legit concerns here. I don't think that's what he's talking about. You know, centaurs, they are they are rough people to get along with. I know, I've met some centaurs. And like I said, they haven't even been around since ancient Greece. So, I don't want her to get teased and end up friendless like she was in high school. So I asked her to stop writing. She'd have more time and money if she stopped writing. I think this is an embarrassing hobby that's going to cause her more embarrassment and bullying than it's worth. Am I a jerk? Edit. I now see that I'm obviously the jerk. Thank you for all the candid feedback. More details in the comments below, but I'm looking for a therapist to help work me through my fixation on what others think. I've apologized to my girlfriend and shown her this thread. And I think I'm going to go to the barn with her to meet the horses and take riding lessons. If I'm not supportive of her, we've agreed it's best to break up so she can be with a more deserving partner. I'm sorry for my ignorance and jerkishness. And thank you for helping me acknowledge that. Well, I mean, if she's a centaur, I don't know why he needs to rent a horse. I mean, this is legit concern here. I mean, my guess. <laughs> So, on a serious note, it's really good that OP has kind of seen the error in his ways, um, because what he has been doing is not cool. Well, you know, the th weird thing is, if you're in, r in the wrong, you should never admit fault. And that's what I've learned. No, you know, that's a very bad philosophy. And... Why, we're on Brian's <laughs> bad advice again. <laughs> you well, your channel, I have to have all my bad advice somewhere. <laughs> See, the thing about you is like, you'll bring reason to it. So people will be like, oh, okay, he's he's not actually serious. I, I can't, I can't, of course, do this on my own channel. Because then people would think I'm a monster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, I think that. It's a great resolution. It On a, a serious note, yeah. no, a really serious, you know, it's good that he's kind of seen the error in his ways and is like, oh yeah, maybe maybe this is something that she really loves. Maybe I shouldn't be worried about horse girls. Exactly. Like, the thing is, you're not in high school anymore. Like, if anyone is worried that your girlfriend is riding horses, like, who's also a grown adult, like, they're not worth your time, you know? Uh, I don't think that there's as much of a horse girl stigma as OP makes it out to be. Well, we also live, like, in the most ruralist of places. I mean, places. I guess that's true. <laughs> like, horse girl stereotypes here don't exist in Maine because, like, people actually ride horses in Maine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's still the level of privilege that goes with it. Like, a lot of Mainers also can't ride horses. We don't have yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there definitely is an air of privilege that goes with being a horse girl, but yeah, we don't have the same, I think, horse girl stereotypes that some places do. Yeah, well, there's a lot of open country. There's actually some stables right down the road from us, um, and, you know, we we see horses on the road and whatnot, and, you know, it's not it's like, it's super uncommon, and so we may not even experience those kind of stigmas because they might not even exist in our area, but where he's from... It may very well be a real stigma, but you know what I say? Those people you should just ignore. Exactly. Like, you're grown adults. You don't need this middle school drama going on. Yeah. Like, if your girlfriend likes to ride horses, and it sounds like that's even therapeutic to her. It's given her, you know, reason to uh, not drink alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, when that's something she struggled with. And like you say yourself, this is the longest she's been without using it. And substance use disorder is a really hard thing for people to deal yeah. with and so that she found this wonderful outlet and you're basically like no you can't do it because it's embarrassing like, yeah that was a really bad reaction i'm really glad that op's been able to see why that's such a bad reaction yeah i think this is actually a really happy ending because yeah. now he's spending time with her to go riding and they'll be able to actually like have a shared hobby yeah and be able to go on adventures you know riding horses and stuff like that and hopefully yeah i mean He's still really young. She's still really young. You know, they're in their 20s and they have a lot of growing to do. So it's not really like this is, you know, out of the blue for someone that age, you know, to have these kind of like 
thoughts that are still centered around like high school. Um, but you know, high school was <laughs> four years ago for them at this point in time. And so hopefully they can move past that phase in their life. Yeah. All right. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my 11 year old brother what vaginal discharge is? So a few days back, my brother had to get clothes from the dryer because I was injured. Laundry is one of my chores. Anyway, he noticed that there were bleach stains on my underwear, and he took it to mom and asked her what it was. Instead of explaining, she told him that I didn't clean my body properly, because of which disgusting fluids came out of my butt. Basically, she said that I was unclean, due to which my body had these secretions. This resulted in my brother making fun of me for days, and he even told his friends the same. I was annoyed because A, vaginal discharges cause the bleached patches on panties, it is normal, B, it was none of their business anyway, and telling everyone about how dirty my underwear looks is something I'd rather they didn't. I explained to my brother what exactly was happening, and that it was rude of him to go around discussing my business to his friends. Mom got mad, she told me that my brother was too young to be knowing about such stuff, and I was too young to be having vaginal discharge anyway, unless I was sexually active. I am 17, a virgin, and asexual. I mean, I did tell my brother all the period stuff to gross him out a bit, but I figured that he needed to know that anyway. Was that a jerk move? Edit. I saw a few comments that said that linking the discharge to sexual activity was completely illogical, and I agree. I think that I could have worded it better. Uh, it's just that feeding me such lies about my body is mom's twisted way of keeping me from having sex. That doesn't sound any better, but that's what I think is going on. She has always made it clear as day that I am not to have adult activities before marriage. And any talk we've had about adult activities is just that adult activities is a way of a man pleasing himself, so I shouldn't expect to enjoy myself. I know now that it's a bunch of BS, but holy heck, I grew up thinking that adult fun was something dirty and earned. Mom's been very obsessed with my period, like she'd make me check my underwear for blood whenever I had a stomachache, even when I was as young as eight. Anyway, this just got weird. Thanks for all your kind replies, and I can assure you that my brother won't end up as a sexist pig who has no idea how female bodies work. Wow, that edit. This sounds yeah. like a really unhealthy household. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, OP, you are 100% not the jerk. Like, first of all, 11 is about the age where they teach us yeah, in, I mean... in health class anyway. Like, and it's so important, because, like... Well, what happens when he gets a girlfriend someday and then she has, you know, stains like this? Like, what's he going to think? Oh, he's going to become rude to her and be like, oh, you need to clean yourself better, right? <laughs> yeah, like, it's just such a horrible misconception yeah. like, that the mom has implanted in his brain. And so, like, it wouldn't be the jerk to tell him anyway, but especially where his mom has fed him this. Like, why does she think that misinformation is so much better for him? I don't know. It's, like, I mean, just it's so hard. Twisted. Yeah, it's hard to get get into people's heads like this. But it's probably just that she wants to. Uh, I don't know. I, I would. I would have a really hard time speculating. Same, but like, so it's OP is totally in the right to tell him. I mean, it's just it is just a natural bodily po process that happens to a lot of people. You know, about half the population at some point in their lives. So. um I think it's really important that she does clear up this miscommunication for him so he doesn't have these kind of uh, mm -hmm. wrong ideas. I hope you... In oh, I'm sorry. Were you about to say something? I hope you... I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed today's, today's video. video. If, if you, you did, did, consider, consider giving, giving me a like. like or That's letting what me I know in the say, comments. So. <laughs> I, I say the, uh, consider oh. giving a like as well. Yeah. Okay, well, then consider giving me a like. Or let me know in the comments. Or let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. And have a great day. And have a great day. There, we said the Amber Pledge. <laughs> is that what that is now? <laughs> I do solemnly swear that this was an episode of Amber's <laughs> <laughs> Reading Reddit with Amber. And any content in which is not legal advice or medical advice. No, there's no legal or medical <laughs> advice in here. Please consult your doctor and your lawyer if you have any medical or legal <laughs> questions, but not at the same time. Unless, of course, you do have them at the same time. Maybe you have a law doctor who's a lawyer. At the same time, you could be a, a, a doctor. Consult your doctor.
immediately if you have questions about the law being in the wrong place.